What's going on everybody? I'm Primal Liquid and welcome to my guide for Disgaea 6. Now in this video everybody, I'm going to be showing you the best way to stat max. Because I'm going to be showing you guys how to farm 16 trillion stats an hour in the juice bar and for a little clarification guys 9.9 .9 trillion is the absolute cap on character stats without taking evelties and gear into account so let that sink in you know per hour you can pretty much max out two characters now before we actually get into the method though, there are a lot of things we are going to need for this and because of that this is a very very late game stat maxing guide. You need a lot of things to make this work. So let's take a look at everything we need, shall we? So first things first, I do suggest using Biko for this method. If you don't use Biko, you are going to need a war lady for their, uh, their big AOE skill, which is called full strike. Now, I don't really like doing this with a war lady. I prefer doing this with Biko just because, you know, it's kind of faster in my opinion. But the reason for that is World's End. Aside from the fact it's a really, really strong skill, like it's way stronger than uh, Full Strike, it also has the biggest range out of any other skill in the game other than Full Strike. Because it hits a massive, massive tw uh, 12 squares, I think. Uh, hang on, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 13 squares, I was close, okay, I was close, but yeah, 13 squares is the uh, the biggest, like, hitting skill in the game other than full strikes, so that's why we do this with Biko. Other than that, you are going to need a Infernal Corrosion Evelty. Now, this is a bit of a pain to unlock, because in order to unlock this Evelty, you do need to actually complete 100% of the demerits. Once you've completed 100% of the demerits for a character though, you can create Evelty scrolls of the Evelty, and then you can pass it around to other characters who don't have 100% demerits. So that's how I have uh, the Infernal Corrosion on Biko, even though she only has 60% completion. So that is a little benefit. Now, what that Evelty actually does is... When attacking an enemy, obtain extract equal to 0.0001% of its stats. However, that's a little wrong. It's not when attacking an enemy. It's actually when killing an enemy. You see, I've tried this with handicap abuse, and unfortunately, you don't gain any extra stats. You do actually have to kill something. And that is where this little cheese really comes into play. Because it's not only enemies that will give you stats when you kill them. Allies do as well. Which means, yes, we are going to be killing all of these allies to gain stats from them. And the reason for that is... When it comes to stats in Disgaea 6, the actual, like, normal cap is 999 billion. And there's only one enemy in the game that will actually go past that cap, which is Roxosha Ball. Now, on zero stars, he has about five to six trillion in each stat, and on 20 stars, he has about 25 trillion in each stat. But he's a real pain in the arse to farm, so we're not going to do him. Instead, we're going to actually just be killing our own characters over and over and over again because it's way faster and we can earn just as many stats. Now, as you can see right now, my stats are incredibly, incredibly low. In fact, they're really, really far away from the 9.9 .9 trillion base cap that characters can have, which means what you're about to see is not the actual maximum you can earn doing this method. So... I've gone over one of the main novelties, but let's take a look at uh, Biko in detail. So we have Hasty Rush, you know, just in case we fail to kill the, um, you know, the enemy. It will actually attack twice with this. High firepower mode, you know, just more damage, taste of victory, more stats. Infernal Corrosion, that is what gives us the extract, so that is by far the most important one. You need to have that. Board Freak, you know, if we're going to be killing Lucky Boards, we might as well get a bonus for killing them. Damage Reward, I'm going to get some HL from... You know, all the murdering, so a little bit of a bonus there. Board killer, which increases damage by 50% when attacking lucky boards. This is just to ensure I get that one shot, even though it's really not needed.
needed with uh, World's End because it's so strong. Seal of Betrayal, which is one of the most important ones as well, which Deathblow's ally you needs. This is how my Biko, with a measly 300 million in stats, can easily kill my units with 2 to 3 trillion in stats. If she hits, mind you. That is one of the things. Like, you should really uh, try and get Biko a lot of hit for this. And then, Mana Scarcity, you know, just for more damage. The only, the only Evelties here that really, really matter, though, is Infernal Corrosion and Seal of Betrayal. You can do this method with just those two Evelties. For all the other characters, it doesn't really matter what they have, as long as you have something that gives them 100% stat bonuses. So, what I do is I just use Fetters because it's free cost and it increases stats by 100%, which is the maximum stat gain you can get from Evelties. So, you know, it's a very quick and easy double stats, which means double extracts for us. So, we've got um, Fetters on all of these characters. Now, as I mentioned earlier, my stats are nowhere near the maximum, but also I don't even have um, all of these characters, you know, at 4,000 reincarnation points for each stat. I don't have them all with the, you know, stat cap removal evil, uh, karma bill passed. So this is absolutely nowhere near as efficient as it can be. So please do keep that in mind. So, I've gone over pretty much everything you need now, so let's take a look at the Demonic Intelligences. Now, this one actually took a, quite a bit of while to set up properly, to actually get it working. So, for Biko, we actually have enemy forces, move to a point five panels away, wait until other units have acted, this is so they all get in place, and then use World's End. This way, everybody's going to move into position, and then Biko is going to kill them with World's End, including the enemy, effectively ending the stage. So that's what we're going to be using for Biko. For the other nine characters, we are going to be using something a little bit differently. We're going to be using target the enemy forces, move toward target, wait until other units have acted, and then just a random skill. Now, here's the thing, right? You need to have a skill here. You can't have, like, just an empty space because the game won't let you have an empty space there. So you need to have something. You can't have defend because that counts as an action. And if you use an action, Biko will not attack because of the party being in the way, unfortunately. It'll just end the turn. Now, even though in the advanced settings you have attack ally yes and enter allies attack area set to yes, even though these are set, if the ally units make an action before Biko, she will still not attack. Oh, that's one other thing as well. You, you need to have this turned on for Biko. Make sure that is set to yes, otherwise she still won't attack. So the way we get around this is rather than using defend, we use any random skill. But here's the thing, Fetters completely locks all special skills. So even though they're set to use a special skill, they can't, which means they just stand around doing nothing, which means Biko will actually attack. Okay, so that is the that is the same demonic intelligence I use for the other nine characters, by the way. So all of these characters have the exact same uh, demonic intelligence setup. You've seen Biko's, and we've also seen the Evelties now. So let's get into the actual method, shall we? Now, I do suggest, you know, just to get that little bit extra, you know, put it up to enemy strength 20%, and make sure World End is boosted via the... Um, the ability shop as well. I've got mine set to, you know, 9,999 because SP isn't really an issue because everything dies in one hit. And after that, you know, we'll be full SP anyway. Though that's the only real important thing. Now, if we take a look at the juice bar, I'm just going to quickly go ahead and spend all of my stats. Yeah, yeah, there's not a lot there. You know, I've been kind of uh, spending these as I go because this is going to be a case of the more you spend the stats, the more you gain, essentially. So what we want to do is we want to get our unit stats as high as possible. Because the higher they are, the more we get back. So right now, I have absolutely nothing for attack, defense, int, res, hit, or speed. Yes, I do have a ton of HP, but I can't spend that because if we take a look... Uh, while I have 20 quadrillion HL, which took quite a while to farm, and I'm not even breaking a dent in my stored HP extracts, unfortunately. So, we're just going to completely ignore HP and SP for this video, because nobody is ever going to max them out. It would require farming for literally thousands of hours to max them. 
Right, so as you can see, I have no stored extracts, so we're going to go to the dimension guide right now. And what we're going to do is we're going to go to Martial Dimension and the final trial. Now, with this, we are going to have uh, all our units are going to run around the lucky boards. And then Biko is going to attack with World's End. And as you saw, that fight there ended in about five seconds. You know, so it, it's a pretty quick method. The only problem is, because my Biko's hit is quite low, I only have a 30% chance to hit some of my units. So that's why I had two units survive there. Now, even though that took five seconds, as you can see, I've got about 100 million extracts for each attack. That's not a lot, and it's certainly nowhere near uh, as good as the 16 trillion that I mentioned before. So where does that number actually come from? Well, as I mentioned earlier on, the official base stat for characters is 999 billion. However, you can pass a bill when you reincarnate for 500 million karma, which will actually remove that stat chemi. Uh, stat commit stat limit allowing you to get all the way up to 9.9 .9 trillion in stats now that is only a base stat cap as well for the character that is not counting evilties it is not counting gear or anything like that so with that in mind with 1 billion uh, sorry with max stats which is you know 9.9 .9 trillion for attack defense and whatever you will gain 1 billion billion stats at the juice bar that's per character by the way and yeah that that's not a lot you know it's not a lot at all however the good thing about infernal corrosion is that will give you extracts based on the final stats of the unit which means yes we can take this even further you see with gear we can actually gain another 3.6 trillion stats now i don't have a maxed out rock sasha item at the moment so i can't show you the stats there however they do cap out at 300 billion in each stat and then of course with the weapon mastery at level 100 it is effectively tripled as well giving you 900 billion in stats although that is only from an individual armor times that by four pieces you know you've got a weapon and then you've got three armors that is effectively another 3.6 trillion stats just from gear and that will take you up to 13.5 trillion and then you've got the evil fetter on top which will double that effectively taking you up to 27.2 trillion in stats now, at 27.2 trillion in stats on each character, this is why I said at the very start of the video, guys, this is a very late game farm method, okay? So, at 27.2 trillion stats, you will gain 2.7 billion of each extract per fight. Now, remember, that's one fight, okay? And that is only on one character. Now, we have a lot more than one character. You will be able to kill all of these characters. If they're all stat maxed as well, one fight will actually be giving you 21.7 billion EXP. Uh, EXP? Stats. 21.7 billion stats per fight. And again, each fight takes 5 seconds. That means you can get 12 fights done in a minute. And a minute is 261 billion stats. 10 minutes is 2.6 trillion in each stat. And finally, an hour is just below 16 trillion in stats. Now, this is going to be one of those methods that starts out really, really slow. But it does get a lot faster as you go on. Now... There are a few things I suggest doing before you do this method, though. First and foremost, you absolutely want to super reincarnate them enough times so that you can actually get the stat limit break and the capability limit Yasha break. Now, you get these by completing the Roxasha 5 map. Not that easy of a map, however, you can cheese it with some witches and elemental burst. Once you beat that map, you can pass these reincarnation bills on anybody. What these do is, stat limit break adds a digit to the end of stat limit. This is what takes you up to 9.9 .9 trillion stats. And you've also got capability limit Yasha, which increases the maximum capability up to 4,000. 
Make no mistake, this is a bit of a long grind. In order to max out one character, even if you were using the Hoggle EXP build, it would still take 640 reincarnations to max this out. It's still worthwhile though, because this is going to get you super, super high in stats, allowing you to get even more extracts. Not only that, on your final, final reincarnation, make sure you actually put them in the Overlord's Guard group. Because this way, they will be earning less EXP, but they have 150 extra percent growth on all stats. Super, super handy. That's not all though. When you are actually leveling them, make sure you equip them with some uh, very specific gear. Let me see if I can find mine. So here we have on each individual item, we have Secret Trainer. Now, Secret Trainer is a unique innocent that on level up will give you 10% bonus stats. So by having four of them, we have another 40% bonus stats. So straight off the bat, with just this and the, um, the squad, that is 200% extra stats that we can get on level up. You can also take this even further though when leveling. I know, I'm sounding like a broken record now, aren't I? But what you basically do is you use the stat boosting LTs while actually leveling them up. Now, I would suggest going for something like attack, hit, speed, and then whatever you want for the last one. It doesn't really matter. Just go for the 100% ones to give you another 100% in growth. Now, that alone at maximum stats will actually put you around the 6 to 7 trillion mark. That's completely without gear as well. Once you're at 6 to 7 trillion on so many units, you will actually be earning quite a few stat extracts. Like, you'll be able to max out pretty quickly with that. Within a day, or if you leave it going overnight, you would be able to wake up, and then you would be able to max out the rest of your characters, and then you would really be able to get this method going. But though, guys, that is going to be it for this video. I hope you have enjoyed, and I hope it has helped. If it has, then please be sure to hit that like button down below and leave a comment as well. Let me know what you think of this stat maxing grind, and if you are actually going to max out any characters with this. And of course, if you are new to the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button as well for even more Disgaea 6 guides. As always, though, everybody, thank you for watching, and I will see you soon.